wow, this last year has been like a fast moving train. It's caught me unaware and I feel like I haven't moved an inch and yet the whole year flew by. And like throwing a rock across a pond, January has already skipped by and I'm worried that February will do the same. So I really need to create some goals and objectives for myself. I'm worried that if I don't, then the whole year will skip by like 2021 and I'll have learned nothing. So this will be a list of 5 to 10 things I specifically want to improve at or learn this year. The first thing that I want to learn is TypeScript. But before I jump into that, there is another thing I really want to do this year and it's create a brand new YouTube channel called Enhance UI for Design. If you didn't see the post I already made, it's going to be things on UI and UX and how to design better websites. So link in the description below for that. I've also created another channel called Codex and that's going to be about no code, which is creating websites with visual tools and that's going to be pretty cool as well. But in terms of TypeScript, what I want to do here is learn TypeScript in one month and I want to do this by actually exploring and building out a project. And for those that don't know what TypeScript is, it's essentially JavaScript with syntax for types. This allows you to write without having to worry of making mistakes, which is something that I always do in JavaScript because the type definitions will automatically detect what you've done wrong and you can accurately fix that up before it gets into say building or compiling. More and more projects seem to be using TypeScript these days and even Create React app initializes with TypeScript. And in the job market, I'm seeing more and more postings for TypeScript as well. So it's definitely something that I think we should learn all in 2022. The next thing that I want to learn, well, maybe relearn or improve to learn is CSS. My CSS skills aren't the best and I haven't been keeping in touch with all the changes that they've recently made. Things like CSS flex is something that I understand, but CSS grid is something I've never touched. And I think that more and more websites are utilizing it now. So it's definitely time to learn CSS grids. For those who haven't heard of CSS grids before, they're very similar to how we used to use Bootstrap to create create rows and columns, but instead now this has been incorporated into CSS. It makes it much easier, but you have to define what your grid structure looks like and how it works, including things like gaps and columns and the structure and sizing of how much rows each item might take up. It's a bit complicated, but once you figure it all out, it probably makes a lot more sense than using Bootstrap, for example. Every developer has to be familiar with API requests. And yet this next item here that I really need to learn is something that's been around for a while, but I haven't particularly gotten on board simply because it looked a little bit complicated when I had a look at it the very first time, which was years ago. That is GraphQL. GraphQL is a way of doing API requests without doing the traditional get, put, post and whatnot, because it essentially allows you to create queries or use query language to pull out data from the backend. Now, traditionally, we would do an API request. Say we wanted some users and maybe their friends and maybe the post those friends made. We would have to create a specific route on the backend that compiles all that information across and sends it to the front end. Now, this can be tedious, especially when you have hundreds of different types of requests you have to make. You have to make a lot of backend code. What GraphQL ends up doing is allowing you to have something more dynamic, where the request and the type of information that you're trying to pull is structured on the front end and the backend dynamically adapts and only has to be kind of configured with what data is there and what sort of relationships and takes care of the rest. This is really cool, but I never really learned it properly and I think it's about time to do so. This next thing that I want to learn is called CI CD. It's not really a programming language or a framework. Instead, it's a modern development practice, one that I'm not actually doing. And it's to do with automation. What it stands for is continuous integration and then continuous deployment and delivery but it's something that you have to spend some time to do because it involves things like doing testing, maybe adding some GitHub actions that deliver your code as soon as you commit a change and lots more. It's something that I think is useful, especially in this day and age when we have so many people working on a single project. It could save time, especially because I'm not doing any testing per se. And I think that having an automated test in general should be a good idea, which brings me to the next thing I want to learn. And this is another software development practice called testing or TDD and BDD. And this practice extends out these acronyms to test driven development, as well as behavior driven development. There are two different types of ways to do it, but 
what it ends up being is a way to create good tests for your application to make sure that it doesn't crash or when you integrate new functions and features, it doesn't blow up, which mine has in the past. You'll find that if you're applying for jobs these days, you'll have to do maybe a small job interview where you do a technical test and maybe they'll ask you to build a small project. And more likely than not, they're going to ask you to do integrate tests into there. And if I was doing that right now, I would fail because I wouldn't have the slightest clue of what I'm doing. So this is definitely on my to-do list for 2022. One of the last things here on my list, which is still important, but not as much so, is learning how to really use a real-time data database. More specifically, I want to learn how to use Google's Firestore. I've built a lot of databases in the past, as well as SASs and projects, and I've gotten into a safe bubble of mostly using MongoDB. And I think it's time to expand those horizons. While it's always useful to specialize in one database, having a broad knowledge really always helps you see what other applications you might be able to add or incorporate into something that you're building. Firestore is one of the most popular ones. And I've actually been queried as to whether I know it quite a few times when I've been out there doing projects. And the fact that I didn't meant that I lost out on good opportunities for work. So this is one of the ones that I want to check out. If you haven't heard of Firestore, it is Firebase's real-time database that allows you to do JSON objects with real-time changes showcasing. It has some really cool inbuilt SDK, so you should be able to hook it straight into React. It has offline capability and good security, and I think there's a lot more to it, but I won't really know until I find out. So it's one that I definitely look forward to learning about as well. Finally, JavaScript, which seems to be changing at a lightning pace. There have been so many changes in ES 2020 and 2021 that I just don't know about, and I really want to learn all about them. So that's going to be something I'll be checking out, as well as some of the upcoming changes for ES 2022. And that's all folks. I'd love to hear what you guys are planning to learn this year and maybe I'll get some ideas and create some videos around those subjects as well. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.